Welcome to the Scale Model Club. Uh, today let's be finishing off the Horsa Glider. Uh, didn't go quite as planned but let's see how it turned out. Great. <laughs> Okay, hello everyone, welcome to the Scale Model Club again. Uh, part three of the Halls of Glider, finishing it off now. Uh, so it's all been built. Uh, the underside's been matte blacked. Uh, we've done the top side, the dark earth brown. And now I'm gonna paint on the camouflage in a nice freehand pattern. Uh, I'll quite get an intimate freehand, so We'll give it another go. This is the dark green from Migamo that's part of the early RAF set. Not been a bad build so far. How is everyone? Hope everyone's safe. Hope everyone's staying indoors. Not unless you obviously need exercise. Pfft. Honestly, I do gaming, I do modeling. Uh, but, uh, being being told to stay indoors is is uh, is just almost uh, almost heaven. So had lots and lots of issues with the completion of this model. I'll show you a couple of them as we go. Um, uh, one of the major ones was my fault. So we'll learn from that one. Well, we'll all learn from that one. Um, and the other one uh, is mostly an Italianary problem. Having said that, it has been a lovely build. All the parts have really fitted together. Anything that hasn't really fitted together very nicely has been my fault. Um, the paints all performed quite well. Uh, some have had some issues with some of the Vallejo paints, but as you, I have got now got a paint retarder, which has really helped. Last little bits of the camouflage going on. Standard, standard uh, airbrush settings, 1.2 needle, 1.2 on the old compressor, which is starting to, it's on old legs, bless it, I might need to get myself a new one. I was also thinking about getting myself a, a nice cheap airbrush, like a dirty, horrible cheap one, just to uh, do some clear coating. Just leave it just for that. So we'll move on to the underside now. So I've had the I fitted the wheels on, which I didn't before, um, and also the front carriage uh, skids on the wings. A um, few other bits and pieces that were added to the bottom of the aircraft and all the little bits and pieces that are put on it. And we're now going to paint all of those in this Vallejo matte black. So I've got the black and that little white bottle is the retarder. So I put a cup full of paint in, one drop of retarder and then give it a bit of a stir. And then bosh, start painting the black.
this stage I was properly pleased with it. The camo looked nice, the underside looked nice, everything was going swimmingly. Uh, next job is to whack the clear coat on. This is Tamiya's XF22 or X22 which is a gloss clear coat. Same settings for this as it is for the paint and also watered down exactly the same as the coloured paints. So, once the gloss has dried, time for some decals. I've got a Tupperware lid there that's got warm water in it. Yeah, I've got my Mark Fit there, which I'm really, really, really pleased with. It it works an absolute treat, that stuff. Uh, I will use that instead of Microset and Microsol now, I think, because it is just one bottle that has everything in it. Uh, and you cut the decal out to the right size. Get your wrong way round pliers. There must be a proper name for them. Um, dip it in the warm water for 10 to 15 seconds. Let, it, let the water go through. Now, the warmer... It is, you don't want boiling, but if it's quite warm, it just, it releases from the backing paper a lot quicker. Then you paint a little bit of Mark Fit on the, uh, on the plane, and then you put the decal on the wrong way around. And I thought, ugh, that was right. From that point on, it just went horribly wrong. But anyway, that went on nicely. And, uh, I think we'll speed up putting the rest of the decals on.
Uh, so, not too many decals there, so I thought I'd leave all the footage in of me doing it, just to speed it up a little bit. They went on really nicely. I uh, was really pleased. Still at this stage, it looked nice. Camouflage looked nice. Decals looked nice. Pretty much getting to the point where it was finished. I was looking forward to doing a bit of weathering. Uh, which is where it all went a bit wrong. What I should have done in the next stages is gloss coated over the top so that it sealed in the decals and so I could put the weathering stuff on. But what I actually did was I just put the weathering stuff straight on top, which the effect was nice. I like the effect, it's not bad. It's dulled it all down a bit, giving it a really grubby look like it has been seen some action. But in the in the uh, whilst cleaning some of it off and getting it to look a bit nicer and tackling some of the smaller pieces, I rubbed off the decals on the wing and made them look awful. And we'll see what I did to fix it. few more decals to go on here we'll just scoot through all of this the bottom side lines and the round all speed this bad boy up a bit shall we Mark fit works really nicely. In the morning, all the uh, decals were properly flat and they'd really sunk down. It did, did a really good job. And I went and mucked it up. But it's nice, it's good. So we can leave this kind of stuff in so that people like yourselves and stuff can see what can be done to uh, help you out of these kinds of situations without going mental and throwing it in the bin or just repainting it all. Um, I used the decals on this particular model uh, because I thought I'd just show you putting some big decals on, see how it came out. Uh, normally I'd paint them because they're only a, they're sick, they're only a, you can just measure them off of your decal sheet and then mask them up accordingly on the wing and they always look nice, they're being painted on. The only thing I haven't mastered yet is painting the old round doors on, but I need some uh, compasses and some to work that stuff out. Draw myself some round pieces of masking tape. All right, let's, let's whip through this last piece, last couple of bits. Turn it over and then do the underside. Thanks everybody for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing and thanks for uh, putting the notification bell in. If anybody's new to the channel, please do that for me. Um, it really helps my channel along and I do really, really appreciate it. It's nice to know that there are people out there that like watching my videos. So, what we decided to do is mask it all up and paint it white. So that's me, that's masked it up. I've used this as extra thin Tamiya plastic tape. That's the standard six mil masking tape. And this is house masking tape. Ooh. And we've got some Vallejo white. Now this Vallejo white ruined my paint, my my uh, airbrush I had to take it all apart soak it in some cleaner for about an hour two hours to clean it all up because I didn't put the um, retarder in it so what it needs is a good spray and then some retarder which is what I did so it's sort of clogged up from this point on now <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll show you now how I masked up the other side and you can see there where I put the uh, the dirt on it went a bit mad I went to clean it off like you usually do with your damp cloth so it just pulled all the uh, 
decals off. So you put this tape on first. This is like an elastic. This is like electrical tape. So it's like plastic. So you have to cut it. But it will. This is also good for camouflage. I'll show you a bit of camouflage, and we'll do a bit of camp. I'll do a separate camouflage video when I've got some wings together. And we'll do all the different ways of doing a nice camo pattern. So this is me masking the wing up, and we're just going to paint the uh, the stripes white again. So I can then weather over the top of them without ruining them all. But I must admit, if I'd have gloss coated it after I put the decals on, it wouldn't have had a problem. So always remember that. So you want to paint, gloss coat it, put your decals on. The gloss coat serves to stop your decals from silvering. Then gloss coat over the top which sets everything in so then you, that part of the painting process and the modeling process is all done and saved as it were so then you can put anything on it and if it goes wrong you can just take it back to what the uh where the where you put the varnish on so uh yeah so i hope everybody is safe and well and able to watch more of my videos um, and I'll see you in the next one not sure what it's going to be I was going to build some paratroopers to go with this I built a little base for this to go on which you'll see in some of the photos but as you'll see it wasn't it didn't come out that brilliantly I will there is a few little bits of touch up I have to do which I might do and then do a few bits of um, do a few little figure painting bits to go on there. Might add my Jeep, the Willy's Jeep from the very first episode. Right, so there we are. That is the process of masking that up. And then you put, and then I use the same white, took the masking tape off and, bosh, this is what I got. The last but not least, the stairs ah now another thing another thing that irritated me about the Italieri and you can all listen to this Italieri is that every other model in the world tells you if it is a tail heavy aircraft to put nose weight in it which is fine I have weights I have ways of making it weighty at the uh, at the front but not Italieri no what Italieri seems to do is do you a clear plastic stand that keeps the tail of the plane up, which I was a bit annoyed about. Um, if I had have looked through the instructions and made my own decisions, I may well have put some nose weight in. But just be aware of that. If you're building it, if I was you, put some nose weight in it. There's plenty of room underneath the cockpit. So anyway, hope everybody stays safe and I'll see you later on. Really great.